first up, bigger is better. Sort of. big thanks to our sponsor Coral Vault. If you haven't yet checked out their brand new website, head to coral-vault.com. They specialize in what you see is what you get premium imported and aquacultured corals. And if you live in the Fort Worth, Texas area, check out their new retail location, www.coral-vault.com. Hey everybody, Matthew here from My First Fish Tank working in collaboration with Marine Depot and welcome to week four of the beginner how-to guide to saltwater aquariums and reef tanks. If you watched week three, you'll remember that I bored myself into stopping the video and making it into a two-part series. So this is part two of Tanks and Stands. If you miss weeks one, two, or three, I'll put a link up here to the entire playlist and I'll put the links to each video below the fold in the description. Links to the Marine Depot tanks and stand page as well as the accompanying My First Fish Tank blog brought to you by my blogger Max are also in the description below. Without further ado, let's get to it. The fifth consideration when deciding what type of saltwater tank to buy is size. Obviously, smaller tanks cost less money and larger tanks cost more money, but there are a lot of things to consider. We do not recommend small tanks, let's say 10 gallons or under for beginners. But why? Well, here's why. Beginners make mistakes and a small mistake in a small amount of water can lead to wild and rapid water parameter shifts. If you're an old pro in the hobby, you might be able to recognize the signs of stress and you'll know what to do to mitigate that stress before it balloons into something huge. But if you're a beginner, you're not going to recognize the initial signs of stress because you don't have the experience. And by the time you recognize it, it may be too late and you may not know what to do. So with a larger system, let's say something like 20 gallons to 75 gallons, if a beginner keeps up on their water changes and water testing, they'll be able to recognize problems before they get blown out of proportion and take steps to save their tank. So if we had to sum up why bigger is better, because bigger tanks mean that problems are diluted in a larger amount of water, which gives the beginner more time to recognize problems and to come up with solutions. Okay, so if bigger is better, does that mean that a big tank, 120 to 240 gallon, is a good beginner tank? No. I would also say a very large tank is a bad beginner option. Why don't I typically recommend big tanks for beginners? Well, first of all, big tanks are very, very pricey. We're talking thousands of dollars, so that's often not in the budget realm of most beginners. When something goes wrong in a big tank, and trust me, it will go wrong in a big tank, it can be a huge headache. I mean, imagine trying to get rid of hair algae on a 20 gallon tank. Well, it's going to take so much more effort and so much more time to remove that hair algae from a 120 gallon system. Large tanks can overcomplicate things for a beginner. When you have a larger tank, you might be tempted to try all sorts of things that really aren't good beginner options. And you may fall into this trap of trying to correct every single little thing with some new sort of filtration method. It's just not a good idea. It's much better for beginner to keep things simple. And also with a larger tank, that means you can put a lot more livestock in it. And learning about livestock is challenging because every single different species of livestock has its own quirks. So with a larger tank, you're gonna be more tempted to add more kinds of livestock and you're gonna run into more things like disease and aggression issues. So a smaller tank will just mean you have to limit yourself a little bit more. So what are the pros of a larger tank? Greater water volume means that beginner mistakes will be diluted out. And the second pro is you can put in more fish and more inverts in a larger tank. What are the cons of a larger tank? Number one, it's significantly more expensive. And number two, it gives beginners too many options which can overwhelm them. So if a small tank is not a good beginner option and a big tank is not a great beginner option, what size do we recommend? I'd say somewhere between 15 and 60 or 75 gallons. If you can afford a 40 gallon tank, I just think that's a really good sweet spot. It's large enough and has enough water volume to dilute out a lot of those beginner mistakes. And you can also put quite a bit of fish and inverts in that tank. The sixth consideration when deciding what sort of saltwater tank to buy are, what are your end livestock goals? If you're getting into this hobby because there is one sort of fish 
that you absolutely can't live without, then you may need to design your entire system around that one fish. What do I mean by that? Let's take a trigger fish as an example. You know, that humu humu nuk nuk wa pua, right? The thing you see if you're snorkeling or scuba diving in Hawaii all over the place. Well, you need to know a few things first. First of all, a trigger fish is aggressive, so it will often eat other fish. Second of all, trigger fishes can get quite large and they will need a system from 150 gallons all the way up to 300 gallons. That's a big tank. And lastly, they will eat corals. So if you want to keep corals, then you can't have a trigger fish. I was a teacher for many years and we used this thing called backwards design. We said, what do we want our students to learn? And then we designed the whole curriculum around that. Well, if there is one fish you cannot live without, then use that same method. Start with that as your end goal, do your research, and build your entire system around that. Or if you're like me and like most beginners, you don't really necessarily care what things you're gonna put in there because there are so many cool options for a saltwater tank that you'd be happy with a lot. So just stick with us and stick with this series. We will give you all sorts of build lists in future episodes from various price points so that you can build a tank and put all sorts of cool fish and inverts in it. The seventh consideration when buying a saltwater tank are what shapes does it come in? Just consider the various shapes because the shape will determine where you can put it in your house for best viewing angles. If you were to custom make an acrylic tank, you could get that in a whole bunch of different shapes, but your standard glass shapes are a square, a rectangle, a bow front tank, which just means the front pane is at an angle, and there are some tanks that have rounded edges. That's basically it. The eighth and final consideration is what style is the tank? Saltwater aquarium hobbyists use all sorts of jargon when describing different shapes and sizes of tanks. So let's talk about them real quick so you have an understanding of what we're talking about. The first up is a rim tank. This could be either a standard plastic rim, that black rim you see around Petco or PetSmart tanks, but it could also be a Eurobrace tank which takes pieces of glass and silicones them to the inside of the tank to give it more strength. The second is a rimless tank. This is exactly the opposite. It is a tank without a rim that is only held together by its silicone seams and it gives a very clean, infinite, modern look to your tank. This is definitely the most popular type of tank out there today. The third style is a cube. A cube tank is basically a square or very, very close to a square, and it's almost always a rimless tank. The fourth is a peninsula tank. These are long rectangular shape where one of the short edges sits against the wall and you have the two long glass edges for viewing. The fifth is a frag tank. A frag is just a small fragment frag of a larger coral. These tanks usually have a shorter depth so that the light can penetrate the water easier and so that you can quickly access your frags without having to put your whole arm in the water. The sixth is a lagoon tank. Really, this is any sort of tank that mimics the often brackish water, low flow environment of a lagoon. These tanks typically are shorter and have a wider footprint and are a perfect place for planting mangroves. The seventh style of tank is a drop-off tank. A drop-off tank is any tank that has two separate levels and its goal is to mimic the edge of a coral reef where it drops off into the abyss. And the eighth and final style of tank that you hear people talk about all the time is a breeder tank, most commonly a 40 gallon breeder tank. This is just a standard rectangular shape, 36 inches by 18 inches by 16 inches. You can find them in 30 gallon sizes, but I have almost only heard people exclusively talk about a 40 gallon breeder tank. And I don't know if you can see it, but my quarantine tank slash frag tank is actually a 40 gallon breeder tank. Okay, that was a lot of information about tanks, and we're finally on to the second part of this video, which will be very, very short. Do I need a stand? And if so, what sort of stand should I buy? The answer to the first part, do I need a stand? Maybe, but maybe not. If you have a larger tank, let's say above 20 gallons, you'll probably need a stand. But if you have a smaller tank, 20, 15, 10 gallons even, you could probably get away with placing it on a sturdy desk or countertop. When we're talking about aquarium stands, we're usually talking about specific pieces of equipment that are custom made for specific aquariums. Yes, an aquarium stand could be a sturdy desk, it could be a countertop, it could be a side table, but typically an aquarium stand is something 
custom made and built for a specific aquarium. Really, every single aquarium stand I've ever seen has been made of one of three types of material, either a solid wood, some sort of composite wood, or some sort of metal. A stand serves all sorts of different functions. First of all, it can be an aesthetically pleasing addition to your tank. A stand can also hide a lot of your equipment and it's a place where you can do your wire management so you don't have to look at it. One of the primary functions of a stand is to hold the weight because water is very, very heavy. A stand also lifts your aquarium off the ground so you can have an easier viewing experience. And lastly, if you have a sump, typically a stand holds your sump. So do I need a stand or can I use a countertop or can I use a desk? It's really just gonna depend on the weight. If you're gonna have a 20 gallon or less, see 20 gallons times eight, 160, 170 pounds basically. A 20 gallon tank might be 170 pounds. If you have a sturdy countertop or a sturdy desk, it could probably hold that weight. But anything bigger than that, I would probably get a stand that's custom built just so you know that it can evenly distribute all of that weight. And can you build your own stand? I would say of course you can, but do it at your own risk. If you don't know what you're doing, you could make it incorrectly, the stand could fail, or you could make it with some inconsistencies in the top of the stand, which could lead to cracks and a catastrophic tank failure. So now that your mind may be melting with aquarium tank and stand information, we return to the initial question, what sort of aquarium should you buy? Obviously there is no easy answer and we are gonna give you several recommendations in a later video. But if you wanna start planning now and dreaming now, here's our general recommendation. Go with something 20 to 60 gallons with a rear filtration chamber, also known as an all-in-one tank. If you wanna browse all these, just go to Marine Depot, check out the link below. They have several different brands that are all-in-one systems in this size range, from Innovative Marine, to Waterbox, to Red Sea. You can also go to myfirstfishtank.com and click on our aquarium setup guides. Our blogger Max has recently revamped all of these and these were specially curated to make sure all the equipment plays really nicely together. And you can find a build list for every budget from $220 all the way up to $14,000. All right, everybody, that's it for week three. Thank you for watching. Be sure to join us next week for week four, where we are gonna break down all of the essential equipment you need for a saltwater aquarium. As always, thank you for watching. Consider giving this a thumbs up, subscribing to My First Fish Tank and Marine Depot. Happy reefing, be well everybody.